Hello everyone, welcome back to Answers Tutorials by the Knowledge Alpha. In this video, we'll see how to perform basic structural analysis of a 3D cantilever beam. Here we have a cantilever beam. So this is the fixed end and this is the freely hanging end. So we have a uniform load of the magnitude 50 kN per meter square acting downwards along a span of 1 meter. So we have a rectangular cross section here which is 0.2 meters by 0.2 meters. Now we have the properties of the beam material which is Young's modulus is 200 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio is 0.3. Now we have to use ANSYS workbench to perform structural analysis and evaluate maximum deformation, von Mises stress and maximum principal strain. Now let us see how to do that in ANSYS workbench. When you open ANSYS workbench, you can see different modules on your left side here. We are performing structural analysis so that's why I'm selecting static structure and I'm creating a standalone system for the same. So now we have created the standalone system. The first step in performing the analysis is to define your materials and give the properties to your materials. So I'm just clicking on this engineering data. Yes. Now we can see that the default material is structural steel and we can see the properties of structural steel here. Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, bulk modulus, you can see a whole set of properties on the left side here. We can always add a new material either from the database or just click on click here to add your new material. So I'm adding a new material as steel. For this analysis we just have to enter isotropic elasticity properties that's why I'm double clicking on it. Now let us enter Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio for the material which we have taken. So the Young's modulus is 200 gigapascals, which is 2 into 10 power 11, and the Poisson's ratio is 0 0.3. Now that we have entered the properties of the steel, now let's switch back to the project and start modeling. Going to Young's modulus and entering it as 200 gigapascals and the Poisson's ratio is 0.3. Now that we have defined the properties of our material, we can directly switch to modeling now. Just go to project and then we have to do the geometry now. So I'm right clicking on geometry. You can see two options here. You can create the model, you can create the model either by using space claim or by using design model. Space claim can be used for both complex and simple geometries and design model is suitable only for simpler geometries. We have a simpler model here, that's why I'm going with design model. All right, we can see three planes here, XY plane, ZX plane and YZ plane. And we have three axes here. In order to sketch on any plane, you just have to click on the axis which is per perpendicular to the plane. For example, if you want to sketch something in XY plane, you can just you just have to click on Z axis. Now I'm start. I want to sketch on YZ plane. That's why I'm clicking on YZ. Uh, so the axis which is perpendicular to YZ, which is X axis. Or you can always just click on the plane which you want to sketch on, and this use this option new sketch. So before starting, I just want to select the units to meters because in the question, all the units are meters. So it will be very easy if we select meters. Just click on sketch and go for sketching. I'm drawing the cross section now. Let me give dimensions. This is 0 0.2 meters and 0 0.2 meters. Right. Now, in order to zoom in or zoom out, you just have to use your mouse wheel and you can easily zoom in or zoom out. If you want to do pan, 
just click control and then click your mouse wheel and just you can pan just move it and you can pan if you want to rotate click your mouse wheel and just rotate easily just like that now we have a 2d rectangle here let me convert that to b so we have to convert that to three dimensions so extrude is the option extrude and the geometry is already selected which is sketch one length of the beam is five meters so i'm just entering as five meters and then just click generate there you go you have our beam so which is rectangular in shape now if you have a look at the question we can see that the load is only along a span of one meter so we have to split the face on which the load is acting so in order to do that i'm selecting i'm I, this is a zx plane so i'm just selecting zx plane i want to sketch on zx plane so i'm just selecting this and this is our sketch just go to line Now let me give the dimensions. So let me enter that as four meters. Now we have drawn our line. Now we have used to we have to use this line as a tool to split the face. In order to do that, just go to tools, click on face split. So we can see four options here. On the top, these are used for select selecting faces or points or bodies. So this one, this option is used for points. This option is used for edges or lines. This is used for faces, and this is used for bodies. As we are doing a face split, the face is uh, selected automatically. So the target face is this one. Apply. And now the tool which we are using is the edge. So I'm selecting this edge by clicking on the edge selection. Just select the edge. Apply. Just click on generate now. Now you can see that the face is split into two parts. Now that we are done with modeling, let's start meshing now. Just minimize this and open model. As we have discussed in the previous video, this process, the, this process of meshing is nothing but dividing the 3D model into finite number of parts. So in this case, the methodology used is called finite element analysis because we are dividing this 3D model into small number of parts. Before starting with the meshing, we just have to assign the material. Just select geometry, go to solid. You can see the assignment. So by default, the material is structural steel but we have to change it to steel which we have de defined so i'm selecting steel go to mesh in order to generate the mesh just right click on the mesh click generate you can see that your beam is divided into different number of parts in order to have higher accuracy you have to divide this beam into more number of elements in order to do that you can just right click on the mesh and click insert and you can either do refinement or just give sizing so I'm going with sizing and we have to select the geometry so I'm selecting the body and the element size I'm just selecting as 0.05 just right click and then click up, update you can see that your body has been divided into more number of elements okay now we are done, done with the meshing now let's start with the boundary conditions we have to let, let the software know that there is now i'm just selecting geometry we have to lift, let the software know that there is a fixed support at one end and there is load acting on this end so the, these are the boundary conditions which we need to add 
so let me select the end so I'm just uh, going to static structure insert and I'm going for fixed support so on this end just click apply now we have a uniform load on this face the small uh, small face of one meter so I'm just clicking insert and we have to in click on pressure I'm selecting the face this face sorry this face yeah click on apply and the magnitude is uh, 50 kilonewton per meter square so I'm just converting that to Pascals 50,000 okay now that we have defined our boundary conditions now we have to solve the problem but what are we solving for so let's insert deformation so I'm also I just want to insert directional deformation as well so we can see in which direction how much uh, the beam is deforming and I'm including one mice stress and strain I'm including maximum principal strain okay you can add any number of parameters which you want to calculate so I just I'm just going with these all you have to do is click on solve this is a fairly simple problem so it should not take much time to solve solve it so now we have the solution so we this is a total deformation so we can see that the deformation is minimum at the, at the fixed support which is nearly which is zero and it is maximum with the freely hanging part where there is load so it is maximum deformation is 0 0.013 meters and now we can see directional deformation this is the deformation along x-axis so we can see that the deformation is more near the end and it is less near the fixed support we can see one mice stress and also maximum principal strain so if you want to see animation of any particular parameter which you have calculated for example if you want to see animation of total deformation all you have to do is go to animation tab just click on play see now you can see the animation of uh, deformation how deformation is varying with res respect to time from 0 to 2 seconds so here you can see 0 to 2 seconds if you want to change the time you can always change it here so this completes the basic structural analysis of the cantilever beam in this way you can solve complicated problems as well now that if, if you're interested I have a practice question for you so here we have a can uh, simply supported B we have uh, a fixed end A and roller supported B and we have two different loads here one is 25 kilo Newton per meter square the uniform load from C to D and we have a point load at the point E which is 200 Newton magnet 200 Newtons so we have to solve from the maximum deformation one my stress and maximum principal strain just give it a try guys I'll post the solution next week and please let me know if you have any doubts and please let us know your feedback your thoughts comments and don't forget to like subscribe and share thank you